Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, and today, evening time, Israel time, begins Independence Day, Israel's 70th year. Isaiah 66, verse 8, Who has ever heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day? Can a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. We know that this Bible verse in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8, happened 70 years ago in the birth of the nation of Israel. This is a special and exciting year, not only because it's the 70th year, but because this year is the year that the U.S. Embassy is going to be moved from Tel Aviv to Yerushalayim to Jerusalem, and the United States of America with President Donald Trump has declared Jerusalem as the capital. Seven is the number of perfection. The lampstand has seven, representing Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. Seven is the year of the sabbatical year, the Shemitah. And seven times seven, forty-nine, summed down, is the Jubilee. And we're in the 70th year of the nation of Israel. So we know that the number 70 is prophetically important. It's not a coincidence that in the 70th year of the nation of Israel, the embassy is being moved. There is no coincidence in the Word of God. No wonder the world is going crazy. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commandments in Hebrew, those who keep God's Torah, his instructions, and hold fast to their testimony about Yeshua. The dragon is enraged. He knows that his days are numbered. He knows that he's going to the lake of fire. In this year, in the 70th year of the nation of Israel, he is in rage. Now is the time for us to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15, preach the gospel, bring the gospel back to Jerusalem, and go home. Jerusalem is the center of biblical prophecy. Everything is centered on Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the end game. It's the final game. It's the final goal. Jerusalem becomes the capital of the kingdom of David. Then after that comes Babylon, about 586 B.C., and they destroy Jerusalem. They take the people captive for 70 years. And then they come back. They come back under Nehemiah, under Ezra. We read this in the book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 8. And then they rebuild Jerusalem. This is the second temple. And then Messiah comes. He weeps over Jerusalem. And he says, there's not one stone that's going to be left on the other. Because you didn't recognize the time of your visitation. And you won't see me again until you say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Matthew chapter 23, verse 39. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Then Jerusalem, 40 years later, destroyed. Romans come in. Ninth of Av, the same day the Babylonians did it. And then the, the Israelites get scattered, and then it gets Christianized under Constantine. Constantine comes in. Helena's mother comes in. They make it Christianized in a not biblical way, of course. We know this. And then it becomes increasingly anti Israelite, anti Jewish. Then there's a prophet that Muhammad comes with the Muslims. He sweeps through Jerusalem, through the deserts. Then they convert the churches into mosques. And then we have the Dome of the Rock, the Islamic sacred place in Jerusalem built on the Temple Mount. And then finally, in the Middle Ages comes the Crusades. The Pope calls for a crusade to take back Jerusalem. Then the Muslims take it back. And then comes the next power, the Ottoman Turkish Empire comes power. Now they're not Arabs, they're Muslims. And then comes World War I, and the Ottoman Empire is drawn into the war. In 1917, the Ottoman Empire collapsed. In 1917, the British Empire takes over Jerusalem. And then comes World War II. Now Jewish people are fleeing for their life from Hitler. 1947, the UN votes to make one part Arab, one part Jewish. The Jews say it's not what we want, but we'll accept it. The Arabs, of course, say no way. And Jerusalem will go to nobody. It will be an international city. And then May 14, May 15, Israel is proclaimed. And the Arabs come in to destroy it immediately on its birth. And of course, there's a miracle. Israel survives. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his hand is upon it. And of course, they win the war. So now Israel's there. They don't have Jerusalem yet. Jerusalem in the war, Jordan actually takes over. And then what happens is the Six-Day War, 1967. All the Arab armies are gathered around Jerusalem. Say, we're going to destroy Israel. And in this supernatural war, Israel defeats all the Arab nations in six days. Israel enters in on the gate of the lions. They come in on heavy fire. 
They arrive to the Western Wall, they kotel, they break down, and they weep. Jerusalem is back in the hand of Israel, and Israel says, we will never leave Jerusalem again. The world goes crazy. The UN, of course, condemns them. Since then, they've been telling Israel, give back that land, give back that land. So what actually the UN is trying to do is undo the Six-Day War. But it doesn't matter because before the Six-Day War, they also wanted to destroy Israel. The Bible says that we'll have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Jerusalem belongs to Israel. Thus says the God of Abraham, Isaacs, and Jacob. In Zechariah 12, verse 3, it says, And that day I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone. And actually, the Bible says, and I'm paraphrasing, that anyone who tries to move it will be injured. In Hebrew, it says, actually, they'll be cut to pieces. Now, how do you move a city? You can't move a city by moving its borders. And that's exactly what Obama tried to do. We praise Yeshua for Donald Trump. Jerusalem is the only nation in the world that just for building houses, they get condemned. No other nation gets condemned for building houses except for Israel. The battle is over Israel. The battle is over Jerusalem and the dragons in rage. The enemy knows prophecy and he knows that these things are playing out right now. The time is near. Messiah's on his way. Jesus is coming. Yeshua, when he said in Matthew 23, verse 39, that you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He said it at that time to the Jewish people. But the prophecy is for the one new man, for us to say and proclaim his name. And then the gospel goes back to Jerusalem and we go home. That time is getting nearer and nearer. We're not setting any dates, but this year is a prophetic year. This year is a blessed year. In fact, the nation of Israel said, although the Independence Day starts on Wednesday night and goes through Thursday because of the celebrations of the embassy being moved, they said they're going to celebrate all through the weekend. This year, it's going to be a four or five day celebration. Join us in prayer that the Jewish people in Israel and around the world will come to know Yeshua, Jesus, as the Messiah. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, sending you blessings from Jerusalem this Independence Day. Shalom. Americans Rival Wholesale is proud to sponsor this ministry and their efforts to shed light on the issues that face our nation. As a veteran and Christian-owned and operated company, we support the freedom to express these Christian principles. We all understand the importance of being prepared after witnessing the devastation of Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and the wildfires that affected so many. Please support this ministry by clicking on the link below and check out the amazing Alt Media Package for our listeners. Plus, if you use the promo code PNN Radio, that's PNN Radio, you will receive free shipping, a savings of up to $200. Just click on the link below but please do it today. Your support means so much to this channel. The Satanists wanted to install their own tribute, a pagan idol, on the Capitol grounds right next to the Ten Commandments. Billions around the planet are witnessing a world in the grasp of sadistic spiritual darkness. This unholy alliance has infected our governments, our religious institutions, and our societies. The world appears to be unraveling. But can the evil behind these dark supernatural forces be defeated? Is everything playing out just as the Bible predicted it will in the final days? At last, you can know the answers to mankind's most urgent questions and learn your destiny among today's events in the new, unprecedented work taking the prophecy world by storm. Gods and Thrones, Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim by best-selling author, former decorated law enforcement officer and senior pastor Carl Gallops. This changes everything. Available now wherever fine books are sold.